That was my positioning, the guy who did nothing until the last minute. Bill can change clothes in the car. Nobody praised me because I, I would do things at the last minute and, and I tried to reverse uh, to students I'd actually, uh, I didn't think that highly of who were always organized and had things done on time. I'm, I'm still working on it, but uh, uh, procrastination is not a good, good habit. One habit that uh, I developed when I, when I was uh, at college that was actually a very bad habit, which was I like to show people that I didn't do any work. Uh, and that I didn't go to classes and I didn't care. And then at the very last minute, uh, like two days before the test, I'd, I'd get serious about it. And, and people, people thought that was funny. Uh, you know, that was my positioning, the guy who did nothing until the last minute. I um, went to my boss and said to him, you know, I'm going to go do this crazy thing and I'm going to start this uh, this company selling books online and this is something that I already been talking to him about uh, in a sort of more general context but then he said let's go on a walk and we went on a two-hour walk in Central Park in New York City and the conclusion of that was this he said you know this actually sounds like a really good idea to me but it sounds like it would be a better idea for somebody who didn't already have a good job he convinced me to think about it for 48 hours before making a final decision and so I went away and, and, and was trying to find the right framework in which to make that kind of big decision. When I started Microsoft, I didn't think of it as all that risky. I mean, I was so excited about what we were doing. It's true I could have gone bankrupt, uh, but you know, I had a set of skills that were highly employable. I already talked to my wife about this and she was very supportive and said, look, you know, uh, you can count me in 100%, um, whatever you want to do. You know, it's true, she had married this kind of, you know, fairly stable guy in a stable career path, and now he wanted to go do this crazy thing, but she was 100% supportive. I talked to my dad, I talked to Warren, uh, I talked to my wife, Melinda. Uh, so I, I have enough people that know me and actually know where my uh, judgment it isn't its strongest, where I might get overexcited about something or, you know, forget to think about something. And so they're good at correcting, particularly Melinda, good at correcting uh, whatever uh, those blind spots are. And, and I think it's good to encourage your friends and advisors uh, to really give them that license. So it really was a decision that I had to make for myself. A small number of people that you can turn to on, on certain key things is a, a great, great asset. And the, and the framework I found, which made the decision incredibly easy, was uh, what, what I called, which only a nerd would call, a regret minimization framework. So I wanted to project myself forward to age 80 and say, okay, now I'm looking back on my life. I want to have minimized the number of regrets I have. And you know, uh, I knew that when I was 80, I was not going to regret having tried this. I was not going to regret having wanted, you know, trying to participate in this thing called the internet that I thought was going to be a really big deal. I knew that if I failed, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing I might regret is not ever having tried. And I knew that that would haunt me every day. Um, and so when I thought about it that way, it was an incredibly easy decision. The key point there is you've got to enjoy what you do every day. And for me, that's working with very smart people. It's working on new problems. You know, every time we think, hey, we've had a little bit of success, we're pretty careful not to dwell on it too much. If you can project yourself out to age 80 and sort of think, what will I think at that time? It gets you away from some of the daily pieces of confusion. You know, I left uh, this Wall Street firm in the middle of the year. When you do that, you walk away from your annual bonus. And that's the kind of thing that in the short term can confuse you. But if you think about the long term, uh, then you can really make good life decisions that you won't regret later. Warren, how would you define true success? Well, I've, I've said many times that, that, that if you get to be 65 or 70 and later, and, and the people that 
you want to have love you, actually do love you, you're a success. I've never seen anybody that reaches that age. I mean, I'm not talking about somebody that's in extreme poverty or pain or something, but I've never seen anybody that, if they have a lot of people that, that love them, that is other than happy. And I've seen some very, very wealthy people that they give testimonial dinners to and name schools after and everything. Nobody, nobody loves them. You know.